let's talk ultra running. If you're new to my channel, let me state right off the bat, I am not an ultra runner. The farthest I've ever run is 13.1 miles, which is a half marathon. And the farthest I've ever hiked is 20 miles. Now, if you're not familiar with ultra running or what an ultra marathon is, it's pretty simple. Anything longer than a marathon, that being the distance of 26.2 miles, is considered an ultra marathon. The reason that I know about ultra running is because I have a friend who is an ultra runner and her name is Andrea Koyman. I've known my ultra running friend Andrea for almost 30 years and in the past 12 years she has been heavily involved in the ultra running community. She has put in the hard work and dedication to compete in the world's most notable ultra running events and those events include she has done Badwater three times. If you're not familiar with what Badwater is, go look it up on YouTube. There are plenty of videos. A brief synopsis about Badwater? I'll tell you. They start this race at Badwater Basin, thus the name, and they run from there all the way to Lone Pine, make a left, run up to the Whitney Portal Road, and finish at the Whitney Portal. It's roughly about 130 miles. Did I mention that when they do this race, they do it in summer, in July, in Death Valley, you know, the place that's recorded the hottest temperatures on earth. She's also done the Barkley Fall Classic 50K five times. And if you're not familiar with the Barkley Fall Classic or the Barkley Marathons, that's another one you should look up on YouTube. She has a top 10 female finishes in Chimera 100, Cruel Jewel 100, and Hurt 100. She's a member of the Grand Slam of Ultra Running class of 2016. She's also gone international with her ultra running. She's competed in China at the Mount Galagong Ultra Marathon where she finished second. And she's run in the European Alps at UTMB. She ran the last annual Vol State 500K. 500K, that is 300 miles, where she finished second place female and third overall. And She's done Wasatch 100 and Western States twice. And these are just some of her ultra running accomplishments. She has well over 50 ultra marathons under her belt. And 29 of those are ultra marathons that are 100 miles or more in distance. One of her other running passions is her amazing nonprofit that she helped organize and co-found called We Rock, which stands for We Run Our Community's Kids. And over the 17 years since the inception of We Rock, she has coached more than a thousand kids to cross that marathon finish line. Andrea shares her running journey on her social media. I've been an avid follower watching her on the tracking websites and the streaming video websites as she crosses these long distance finish lines. Over the years, I have been persistent in asking her to please do an ultra marathon in the Tahoe area. I would love to crew you. Well, that day has finally come. Before we jump into the video, let me give you a little backstory on what led her to Tahoe 200. Originally, she was supposed to run in a race called Angeles Crest 100. However, that race got canceled. The Angeles Crest 100 is a hard rock 100 qualifier. And this is important. Andrea wants to get that qualifier because last year in 2022, she ran hard rock 100. However, she wound up DNFing, which means did not finish well within sight of almost crossing that finish line. She DNF'd somewhere after 90 miles where she missed a cutoff time. So she wants redemption. She wants to get back to Hard Rock 100. And thus, here is where our story picks up as Tahoe 200 is a Hard Rock 100 qualifier. Unlike previous years, the Tahoe 200 2023 course does not go around the whole of Lake Tahoe. Due to the record snowfall from the previous winter, the course has been altered. The start, fourth aid station, and finish line take place at Heavenly Ski Resort's Stagecoach Lodge. From there, runners head south for 14.39 miles to the first aid station at Armstrong Pass. From Armstrong Pass, runners continue south to the second aid station at Housewife Hill at mile 30.64. At Housewife Hill, they turn around and head back to the Armstrong Pass aid station 
taking them a total of 46.89 miles along the course. The fourth aid station and the first time the runners see their crew is back at Heavenly Stagecoach Lodge at 61.28 miles on the course. Heading north out of Heavenly, the runners cross Kingsbury Grade following the Tahoe Rim Trail to the Spooner Summit Aid Station on Highway 50 at mile 79.23. Due to the traffic congestion of the heavily traveled highway, no crew are allowed here. Continuing north out of the Spooner Aid Station, they travel past Spooner and Marlette Lake to Incline Village where the 6th Aid Station, Village Green, is at mile 97.61. Out of Incline Village, they head through a residential area to a steep hike along the power lines towards the 7th Aid Station at Brockway Summit, mile 110.83. From Brockway, they continue on to where just before the next aid station, they parallel California 89 near Palisades, Tahoe and Alpine Meadows along the mountain ridges coming down into Tahoe City at mile 129.65. Leaving Tahoe City, runners head out four miles to the Ward Creek Water Aid Station where they turn around for the second and final time. They head back to Tahoe City for the second time at mile 137.65. Retracing their steps, they return to Brockway Summit for a second time, hitting mile 156.47. From Brockway, heading back to the Village Green Aid Station in Incline Village, they hit mile 169.69. Moving south from Incline Village to the last aid station before the finish line, they hit Spooner Summit again at 188.07 miles. And finally, at 206 miles, they cross the finish line where they started at Heavenly Stagecoach Lodge in South Lake Tahoe. So we are anxiously awaiting the arrival of my friend Andrea. Got the car out and she should be driving up any minute now. So once she gets here, she's got to unload everything and then figure out what her what's going into her drop bags. That's so cute! I'm like, oh, that's it! I thought I'd leave it out there. It's, it's kind of high school, isn't it? It's so cute! <laughs> Hi! Uncrustables are still on my list. That's all stuff we're doing when, when you come back, charging, right? Yeah. Are, you sh are we sure that I don't have to, like, show the GPX on my... Yeah, you just have to have it on one device. It doesn't have to be on your watch. What is this one? This one, Armstrong Pass. There it is. Okay, that's done. Now you gotta check in. Okay. Just put on the dash. Okay. Jack, you have all your gear? I already, oh. Mandatory gear check? I thought we did that in the morning. No, like do it now. Like my pack? Yeah. yeah. Do you have it with you? No. Say yes. No, I don't. Where's your hotel or whatever? It's not that far, but, um. How far is it? Are you in South Lake? Like, yeah, we're in South Lake. Well, so we went to runner check-in and it was super amazing, except I goofed and I'm supposed to bring my pack to be inspected at runner check-in and I didn't have it. So now we're booking it back to the place to get my pack. I'm trying to take all my Lake Tahoe shortcuts to get us there as quickly as possible to get our stuff. Meanwhile, I'm trying to just maintain calm because I've been very calm this whole time. And uh, you know, I don't want that to change. So we're gonna make it. Mm -hmm. We're gonna make it. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> We ran back to the house to get her pack so that she can show her mandatory gear. I dropped her off at the check-in. She was stressing out. She didn't think she was going to make it. But, um, well, she thought they, that they had packed up, but they're not packed up. You can see there's still people here. Yeah, and I parked the car and I'm going to meet her over here. Ah, there she is. How are you doing today? You've been waiting. <laughs> yes. Thank 
good. So if you find up in, in the situation, how do you find yourself? Um, I hit the bullseye. You have got it. Full yeah. marks. There you go. <laughs> Hello, Andrea. I'm going to give you a really itty bitty quick familiarization with Gaia. Don't freak out. This is going to be easy. Wherever you are in the world <laughs> and you want to find your location, one icon that you need to know is at the top. It's this little bullseye icon. Just press that and it takes you to your exact location. That arrow is you. <laughs> That was my first uh, tutorial. I'm I'm her crew slash tech support. <laughs> you are all set. Yeah, you'll need to scroll that. Okay, all right. Perfect. Okay, here's extra my credit. extra calories. Here is my extra headlamp batteries and extra battery. Emergency bivy, hand warmers, toe warmers, and my whistle is in here. Extra layers, pants, jacket, and a shirt. My emergency medical kit. Glut my buff, which is also the holster. Do you have a, a lucky carbon poles? Yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> hey! Hello. Sorry, it's misspelled. It is? Well, no, that's right. Okay. How's it going? Hey! I'm sorry, I'm the bad. No, you're fine. How are you? Nice to see you. you too. <laughs> Three, two, one. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I told Thank you it was going to be okay. Thank you. I, <laughs> I was, I was, I was like, what the hell? From the outsider looking into this incredible world of ultra running, it was so heartwarming to see how many people Andrea knew and how many knew Andrea. For the medical check-in, they were just asking things like, you know, did you turn an ankle or have you fallen? Anything you should know about leading into the race that was causing you problems during your training? Nope, nope, all good. And then, you know, of course, asked about like allergies. And so I told them about the Benadryl thing. Yeah. So she wrote it down because apparently there's a lot of yellow jackets out here. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I said, no problem. I've ever been attacked by yellow jackets in Tennessee. Super uncomfortable, but you can I just, deal there's with nothing it. I can take, take for it, you know? And then, um, all right, so so she got checked in. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, exactly. from the check-in, we immediately headed to get her her night before the race steak dinner at the Beacon at Camp Richardson, and then stock up on last-minute supplies. Do you like? Uh... <laughs> I need to remember that this is what you do. Yep. <laughs> Little last-minute shopping before tomorrow's big race. We're looking for uncrustables right now. What what are, are they? Oh, okay. Oh, okay. They're right here. Look at this. These are um, crucial to her race, apparently. This is good. Okay. Back at the house, it was somewhat the calm before the storm, or at least I was trying my best to remain calm, as I tried to take in all the information regarding the supplies she would need for me to have at the ready for her along the race. Organizing food, medical supplies, bug spray, lots of bug spray, SPF, charging equipment, changes of clothing, all while trying to get to sleep before 11.30 p.m. The start of the race was amazing. This is the only time you get to see all of the runners together. The wonderful spirit of camaraderie was infectious. Andrea. Oh, I got my spot tracker. I need to give you this back. Okay. Where's Gandalf? He's... Hi! Oh. My pack is exceptionally heavier. Maybe not. Like, should I stay ahead of the sun protection today? Yeah. And you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I think that's a storm move. You second guessing your choices? <laughs> I've had a year to second guess. I've had a year to get ready. I have a year. There's no bad time is coming out. I'm doing this thing. We just took some right. pictures in front of the starting line. Uh, and I'll post them right here. Okay. And now Andrea is uh, taking pictures of people. So now she's a photographer. <laughs>
have your spot tracker, that's that, that little doohickey. And so now you're all set up to yeah. track. Right. Okay. So if you go to the, the link and click it, you'll be able to see, follow me on the map. Just, you can't, you can't roll through it like a hundred, you know? Right. And that's, and that's the hard part. Be willing and have to, you have to go slow. You just have to go slow. Here at the starting line, I was again just amazed to see all the people that Andrea knew, and happy to meet and be welcomed by them as the newbie ultra running crew that I was. We're headed to the start line. Everybody's got their poles out, they'll be clankety clanking all the way up the hill. <laughs> Will you take one with you? Yeah. This is Catherine. This is my crew. Hi. Yeah, see, see you in 60 miles. <laughs> Can I get lost? So Andrea is off and I will not see her for close to 24 hours because the next aid station that I can meet her at is when she gets back to Heavenly. So between the start and when she gets back to the Heavenly aid station, there's a Armstrong Pass and Housewife Hill and then back to Armstrong Pass to here to Heavenly. So that's when they're running south around the lake and they come back to Heavenly and they start up going north. I'm going to head back, um, take it easy, go over what I need for Andrea, pack up the car, get that ready, and try not to stress out. <laughs> About uh, 9.2 miles in, above Star Lake here, and it's just ridiculously gorgeous. Wow, look at that. Here's what I look like overlooking Star Lake. Wow, so beautiful. Mile 9.58. Look at that. Woohoo! Gorgeous. Mile 7. 10.7 and going across the snowy section and uh, feels nice and cool here which is much appreciated thank you mother nature and uh, look at that it's pretty rad right mile 12.54 Wow, oh my gosh. I wanna remember the really beautiful white butterflies with these bright orange wings, the blooms of purples and fuchsia and yellow flowers. It's been so beautiful. All right, 13.1 miles, half Mary done in three hours, 30 minutes. All right, coming up to the first aid station on my watch, this is 14.8, but that's not the distance of the race. Um, and here's my first wooden bridge, and this is me clip-clopping around it, going into the aid station. Coming up on mile 18 and a half, about five and a half hours, and I'm in this section of all of these beautiful wildflowers, purples and yellows, and it's pretty hot. Um, so I've slowed my pace, just trying to keep, you know, my core temp down, my heart rate down, and just cruise, you know? Because that's all this is. It's just a long, beautiful, full of joyful hike with some running trickled in, mostly a hike. So 
Anyway, I want to show you what it looks like here. Oh. <laughs> it's like ridiculously beautiful. All right, I've got a downhill time to shuffle. A guy wearing number 13 just passed me going the opposite direction. That just goes to show you like how much faster they're going than me. <laughs> That's okay. Like I'm running my own race. I'm having my own good time, but Okay, now, now I'm second guessing myself. What did I say? I, I'm at 22.6. I was looking at my total average pace. <laughs> but still, that's how much further ahead he is than me. 22.6, that's where I'm at. Mile 24.8. Look what we got, kids. Yeehaw! <laughs> Just hit the marathon at seven hours and 36 minutes. There's this huge open field and I just crossed over a wooden bridge and I would be lying if I said that I didn't hurt right now, cause I do, but I'm getting it done. I'm almost at 28 miles and I've been hurting pretty bad. But someone just told me that the next aid station, which is at about mile 30, has smoothies. And I'll tell you what, that's something worth living for. It is. All right, so I'm coming up to a 50K and just passed someone on the trail that said they just saw a bear on the trail. And everyone else around me is like, you don't need to worry about the bears. They're pansies. And I'll tell you what, that may be true, but I'm gonna worry about the bear a little bit. I'm just gonna worry, just a little bit. Not much, I'm not gonna like, consume me or anything. But uh, anyway, that's, that's what's going on in my world right now. So I'm at almost a 50K at, what is this? Nine hours? Nine hours. So, yeah. My watch says 32.16, but this is supposed to be at like 30.65. And I was beginning to worry it didn't exist, but there it is. Way to go. Nice yeah, you too. All right, I've got my headlamp on, so I'm gonna try not to look at the camera, but this is an update. I'm at like 12, is it 12 hours, Lucia? I think we're at 12 hours and about 38 miles or so. We took some time at the last aid station, which by the way, by the time we got there, the smoothies were gone and I was told I should have run faster, which is true, but it was, you know, painful truth. Um, also, I didn't realize there's a hundred K going on at the same time as this 200 mile race. So the people that I was like, oh my gosh, these front runners, they were in the hundred K. They started two hours before us. So Michaela was in the lead. Um, and I saw him much later than the other people. So anyway, that's the update. Hope all is well with you guys. It's dark. Bye. All right, I'm at mile 44.22. I've been out for 14 hours and 34 minutes. And I just started vomiting. Man. I was hoping that wouldn't be something I'd experience this race I hoped but it's here so now I've just got to deal with it work extra hard on keeping the calories in and you know I gotta roll with the low points and ride the high points so this is just one of those little downturns right now and I'll get through it 46 miles in, I'm tracking these, these ribbons. I don't know if you can see it there. Hang on. You can see it. Anyway, tracking those ribbons. And um, the way the ribbon was draped over the reflective tape, it looked like two eyeballs looking at me. So I yelled at a flag. A ribbon telling an animal to get out of my way. It was just a ribbon. It's 
5 30 in the morning the sun's coming up and i believe i'm about five miles from heavenly aid station and this will be the first time i have crew which i am very much looking forward to um yeah i'd like some hot food a real toilet wash my face brush my teeth um, maybe change some clothes. Um, anyway, yeah, one, one step at a time. Okay, time to load up some of this stuff into my car and get it ready for the Heavenly Aid Station, which is when I will see Andrea next. Okay, I have all of Andrea's cold things packed up. This is all of her cold drinks and the pudding that she likes. Um, and then over here is an extra thermal bag filled up with ice and cold compresses. And then this is a heat bag filled with her grillers and her uh, thin bagels that she likes to eat. So I've got her hot and cold fuel ready. And then the fuel that is not fuel being food, the fuel that is not, um, uh, that can be room temperature is already in the car packed up last night. So I'm gonna go put this in the car and head out to see her shortly. All right, I am awake and I'm headed to Heavenly Stagecoach Lodge, right up Kingsbury grade, the same place that they had the start of the race. This is the first aid station that the crew can start helping their runners at. When they started the race, they ran south towards Armstrong Pass, the first aid station, the second aid station, Housewife Hill, where they turned around, came back to Armstrong Pass, and then at mile 61-ish, they come back into Heavenly Stagecoach Lodge and meet up with their crew, which is where we're headed to right now. It is 5.51 in the morning. I went to bed at 7.30 last night. I can't remember the last time I went to bed at 7.30. And I woke up at 4.30, so I got a good amount of sleep, which is good because I don't think I'm gonna be getting very much sleep in the next couple of days. That was the longest stretch that crew don't get to see their runners. Andrea is supposed to be coming in. Her projected pace time gets her into Heavenly Stagecoach Lodge around 7 a.m. this morning. I'm probably gonna wind up being there a little bit more than a half an hour early, which is okay because uh, the spot trackers, these devices that show you where the runners are, there's a web link that you can follow to track them. They're kind of iffy. <laughs> I was having little heart attacks last night tracking Andrea because every now and then it would say she was off route. There would be these giant zigzag lines of what her course heading was, but I was reassured by race officials that tends to happen quite a bit. So anyway, she's on course, she's on track, she's hit all of the aid stations before the cutoff time, and we're going to go see her this morning and hopefully provide to her everything that she needs. Anyway, off we go. Andrea coming in at uh, the hey, Heavenly A Station, 61 and some change. Yeah! Hi, Andrea! Woo hoo hoo! Hey, Chris! Hey! <laughs> Why did you leave from back there? Huh? What'd you leave from back there? I tried to get him to come. Gandalf is really proud of you. Oh. <laughs> oh, Thank God. you. I need to sleep for like, eight. <laughs> I want to be... What time of day it is? It's like 7.30. Okay. I want to be sleeping by 8. So I want to go to the bathroom, eat something, and then sleep for an hour, and then wake up and do all the rest of this stuff. Okay. Hi, Nancy's have a good. breakfast burrito hey, with eggs and bacon. Okay, this is SPF first, right? Yeah. I think we're going to go towards the green, Yeah, we're going right now. Yeah. And we're going to camp out somewhere over there. 
Oh my god, you did great. You did great, Nicole. You're an excellent crew. I didn't break the Leon Crustables. You did great. Here's your weird little sandwich. <laughs> okay, so Andrea is uh, getting ready to set out out of Heavenly, which is the fourth aid station, to head up to Spooner and then to Village Green, which is where I'll see her again. And she's gonna get water right now. Yeah. And some more food. Way to go. Oh, thank <laughs> you. You did it, you did the work. Oh man. <laughs> All right, she's off. Me. I'm a little nervous. Yeah, on. Okay, she's off to the next one. Oh. Okay. okay, go, Andrea, go. <laughs> Don't forget to look at the lake. <laughs> so we've sent Andrea off before the cutoff here. Let's see, what time is it? It's a little after 9.30. Um, like 9.38 and the cutoff is 10 o'clock and I won't see her till the village green but there is another aid station before that that she's going to be stopping at Spooner Summit but crew isn't allowed to be there. All right so I got through my first crewing aid station. It was a little, it was kind of a flurry of activity except the time that she was sleeping for that hour. All right I'm going to go do some laundry for her. <laughs> Michelle said to make sure to look at Lake, Lake Tahoe. So I'm looking at it and now you're looking at it. There it is. All right, it's update time. I'm at about mile 76 and a half according to my watch, but I don't know what that really means according to race mileage. But I'm headed to the Spooner aid station, <clears throat> which from the last aid station at Heavenly is an 18 mile section with no um, other aid stations. And the difficulty with this is <clears throat> one, it's really hot. And two, there are no um, natural water sources for me to pull from um, other than about, I don't know, six miles out from Heavenly. So, um, I'm rationing my water because I don't want to run out before I get to the aid station. And I'm trying to eat my calories, but my saliva is not working very well. So, whenever I put something in my mouth, I chew it up real small, and then I have to take, take in water to be able to swallow it. So, it's very difficult because I'm trying to ration certain fluids. Um, so those are the challenges right now. Um, I'll tell you the good parts of this section. Um, I've seen multiple butterflies, which remind me, I'm going to get emotional. Remind me of my friend, Michelle, that passed away in the last couple months. And I feel like she's here with me and like cheering me on. And that's special. And I really like that when I see one. So, anyway, that's what's going on in my world right now. I'll give you another update later. Bye. My view at mile 78. Wow. There is the most beautiful breeze here overlooking the lake. Oh, we haven't had much wind or breeze. This is so amazing. Oh my god. Look at how beautiful that is. Oh. I'm about, I think, four and a half miles to the next aid station. And I've got this, which is my creek water, with little floaties in it. Uh, this is a water purifier that I've got here. And apparently, uh, Giardia can take a few days to kick in. So I'm hoping that if I do get some kind of bug, that it'll hit me after I get off this trail. <laughs> I'm about five miles outside of the Spooner aid station, which was amazing. And I was told there's a six mile climb out of that aid station, but when I get to the top, I'll have the best view of Lake Tahoe. So I'm about one mile from that. 
In the meantime, I wanted to sell you. But what I ate down there, I had, when I came in, it was so hot. I only wanted cold things. So they gave me some cold vegetable soup, all salted up. And I know that doesn't sound amazing, but it was. And watermelon. And then um, two popsicles. Then I was like, okay, I can have some warm stuff. So I had um, mashed potatoes with butter. And now five miles outside of the aid station, it's time for me to eat again. So I'm eating a griller patty on a thin bagel. Thank you, Nicole. You made it per to perfection. Mwah. And uh, I'll show you the view from the top when I get there. Six miles up. There's Lake Tahoe. I don't know if I'll get a better view in the clearing or something, but there it is. This is a little past six, and this is what she meant. Wow, look at that. Incredible. The other thing I'll tell you is rock formations and trees are horrifying at night. Like, why, why is that rock frowning at me? And why is there a baby swinging from that tree? Why? The other part about that, the rock formations, is that I see so many weird and creepy things in bark and um, stumps and rock formations that if I saw something actually real, I probably wouldn't believe it. So like, constantly I think I see bear. And, you know, if I saw an actual bear, I'd probably be like, oh, that's just one of my weird rock formation hallucinations. And, you know, make friends with it or not. And that's what it would be. I'm headed out kind of early to help Andrea at the Village Green aid station in Incline Village. She's running a little late on her projected times, but she's still well within the cutoffs. So I'm going to try to take care of a few things before I get into Incline Village. I know I'm going to have a lot of time to kill. I'm guessing that she'll probably wind up getting into the finish line. Not the finish line. The aid station probably, I'd say between 11 and midnight. So I'm going to pick her up some specific McDonald's orders and I'm going in the opposite direction of Incline Village because there are no McDonald's in Incline Village like Tahoe. There's two McDonald's in South Lake Tahoe. One has a drive through and I think the other one does not. But we'll do that and get some gas and then there's a specific order that I need to fill for her. She likes Spam Masubi for fuel during her ultras. And the only place I could find that makes Spam Misubi is in Incline Village, thankfully, which is where her aid station is, in a bowling alley. <laughs> so, uh, I don't know, we'll see if she likes their Spam Misubi, but it's, uh, sh the chef is apparently from Hawaii, so it should be legit. Alright, so that's, that's what we're doing. Just when you thought it couldn't get any more beautiful, the trail turns you somewhere else, and oh my gosh, there's another view that's amazingly incredible, and gorgeous, and stunning, and perfect, and wow. So it's too early to actually go to the aid station. She's not going to be there for, I don't know, maybe like three hours. But I'm just driving um, to see where it is. Uh, I'm pretty sure I know exactly where it is. I drive around Lake Tahoe and Incline Village all the time, but just, uh, just want to check it out. Okay, it should be right here. Yeah, that's it in there. So now I have to find... Sam Choi's Ohana Grill to get her her Spam Masubi. Okay. Ugh, this is so freaking weird. I'm going to a bowling alley to get Spam Masubi at a Hawaiian restaurant in Incline Village, Lake Tahoe. 
every part of that sentence is an oxymoron. So effing weird. If you're wondering what it's like to crew somebody running 200 miles, it's a lot of hurry up and wait. So I'm waiting in a parking lot right now, a very dimly lit, almost vacant parking lot. And then once she gets a little bit closer, I'll move to the parking lot where I'll do the aid at. But she's not too far away. She's about four miles away. I'm in Incline Village and that's where the aid station is. And uh, she should be here, I don't know, maybe in an hour. She's slowed down a little bit, but she's still moving. And she's got a lot of uh, time before the cutoff. So um, I'm, I'm, I'm right there with you guys. <laughs> I know you guys are worried about her or concerned. She's moving and I will continue to keep you updated. Oh, and there's my dog. Okay, bye. I'm at mile 95. And I've been tired during this race, but now I'm like, I'm sleepy. I'm really sleepy. I wanna lay down and just fall asleep on the trail right here. But I've been alone for, I don't know, a long time and not seen another runner in a while. And anyway, I'm gonna keep moving as long as I can. About seven more miles um, to the next the next aid station where um, Nicole will be. That's that's amazing. Um, gosh, I'm so, I'm so sleepy. over that giant rock. Hi, hi. <laughs> you know, the light is really bright in my face. Sorry. <laughs> uh, here, let me turn but, this I mean, off. We, no, we need it to see, but maybe Great a little. Job, hey, you nice too. Good job. Oh, my feet. Oh, my feet. I need to have someone look at them. Okay. They're at the point where they're jacked. Oh, I smell quesadilla. <laughs> Who would have thought? There's quesadillas here. I wonder how many pounds of cheese. You're doing good. Good ass. Yeah. <laughs> 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 we can blind each other. <laughs> I'm just getting here. You go have fun. How, how is that? How Oops. is that? Look at how happy here. she is. She's pretending to be. It's the damnedest thing. thing. It's the damnedest thing. Yeah. 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 Good work, guys. Yeah. Yeah. It was. You're awesome. It was. Yeah, <laughs> Thank you. Have fun out there. So, one of my heels and then my pinky toes. I was going to say, so, is that your pinky toe? Mm hmm. Yeah. And then um, I'm definitely going to lose a couple of these toes. Oh, toenails, I'm sure. So, well, they're painted now, so that's helpful. Well, <laughs> and I meant to do them before the race, but it didn't happen. So. <laughs> so, I didn't catch it on video, but the spam musubi was a hit. So, she got down half the order of spam musubi, and she's going to take the rest of it with her on the trail and hopefully she'll eat it there. Uh, Andrea, yeah. um, the Spam Musubi hit the spot, right? Oh, I hit the spot. Okay. It was the best thing I've eaten this whole, this whole time. Say hi. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> she's washing her face now and she's gonna be going out on the trail um, shortly. I'm like freezing right now. Cause <clears throat> she uh, took a caffeine pill. Damn. <laughs> so there's your update everybody. See, look. <laughs> All right, so she's uh, headed on her way out. Again, I'm limping right now. Everything else feels good, but my feet are jacked. Are you guys checking people out? Oh, no. I check out on this side. Yep. Let's go down. Do I tell you or go down Me. that one? I'm here for you. Two o four, please. Two o four. All right, I Thank got you. you. Okay. Uh, so and you go back out through the parking lot. You got to come this. Oh. Through the parking lot, not over the bridge anymore. On the bridge. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry. Okay. Ah, here we go. I see the little reflective things. Give me a hug. Oh, oh okay. We're going to sit by her. Okay. You can go to the park. All right. All and, right. And do whatever you need to do, like if you need to get home or whatever. All right. Yeah, maybe I'll, dr I'll drive and take a few hour nap or something. You should definitely get some sleep. Okay. Okay. Love good. you. Thank you. Love you too. Good luck. You're, you're fine.
Okay. Enjoy the rest of your spam, Masubi. All right, so that last aid station was amazing. Got my feet worked on. Had some spam masubi. Nicole and I caught up on things. And I opted not to sleep because I took that caffeine pill. And I'm just like kind of cranked out. So I'm on this section in Incline Village. And yesterday I was saying, God, we haven't had any crazy relentless climbs. Well, we do now. I don't know if you can see this. All those little lights going up there, those are not stars, those are people climbing that big ass hill. <laughs> Time to get to it. Okay. Of all the aid stations, this is the hardest for the crew because we have to hike in a little over a half mile. And I know in the grand scheme of a 20, 20, 200 mile race, that doesn't seem like a lot. But right now I'm carrying probably 40 pounds of weight. I have an ultralight backpack that hikers who are doing like the PCT use. And then I'm carrying a chair and a soft cooler and a dog. So I am definitely getting my workout this morning. Did I mention I only got an hour of sleep? Although again, I know, I know, Andrew didn't get any sleep, so. Andrew's only had two hours. Two? I think she's only had one hour of sleep in 48 hours. Yeah, okay, I'll shut up now. Uh, but anyway, I wanted an adventure. This is an adventure. I feel like you. I just hiked in 40 pounds worth of stuff. <laughs> As I'm coming down, I was like, oh God, I felt so bad. Hey, don't worry about it. Yeah, I can't believe you brought this whole thing. Well, I didn't know what you needed and I didn't want you okay. to get upset. <laughs> Here, for future. Okay. You bring one of each. Like one of that gel, one of that gel. Oh, okay. Gonna, you know what I mean? Yeah. Just bring one of each. Well, you know what? Like, Better safe than sorry. Yeah. Um, <sighs> Live and and what, I, what I knew you wouldn't have was my clothes. At the next aid station, I have to change. Like my shorts I figure, are yeah. so crusty and gross. And yeah. So she's icing up because it's going to be another hot day. Yep. There goes nothing. But it sounds like you're going to walk by a lake, so worst comes to worst, you could jump in that. <laughs> Although that probably wouldn't be good for your feet. <laughs> oh, I don't mind my feet getting wet. All right. You got everything? I think so. Yeah. Gandalf is going to come with you. He's going to pace you. <laughs> He would not enjoy it. <laughs> he would not be a good pacer, let me tell you. <laughs> All right. Adios. All right, give me a hug. See you. <laughs> See you in 19 miles. Yep. All right. All right, have fun. All right, and now it's time for me to pack it all up uh, and head back to the car. But I did learn my lesson. I brought way too much stuff. It won't happen next time when she comes back to this aid station. And it looks like that guy, Gandalf is, uh, he's doing pretty good. I made a number of mistakes. There were baggies where I only needed to take one of each of things in those baggies. But uh, in my desire to not upset her, 
Uh, I just brought everything. But I figure if she can walk 200 plus miles, the least I can do is schlep 40 pounds of stuff a half a mile in and a half a mile out, right? I have to say, I'm kind of enjoying this experience. <laughs> it's pretty cool and I'm, I'm enjoying helping Andrea. I've watched so many of you out there help her and, um, and cried when she crossed the finish line. Oh my God, I'm gonna tear up. Nope, I'm not gonna do it. And um, I just can't wait to be there to see it with my own eyes. Okay, more to come. No tears. I just sent Andrea off at the first Broadway Summit 8 station. Um, I'm starting to feel tired. So, and I'm not going to drive all the way back to where I'm staying here in Tahoe, which is in South Lake Tahoe. Yeah, I want to find a place that I can park and I can organize the car, take a nap, and be refreshed when I see Andrea uh, later, I think, later during the day today at um, the Tahoe City aid station. Hey Nicole, I just wanted to make sure that you know that I'm looking at Lake Tahoe right now. I'm looking at it. Look at There it is over there. And over there. I'm looking at it. Day three on the trail. And I'm just about to hit 125 miles. Um, so far I'm operating on one hour of sleep. Um, I tried to get some sleep last night, but the mosquitoes were getting me. So popped a caffeine pill and just rallied. But I think at this next aid station, which should be maybe like 10 or 11 miles away, I'll try to take a little, a little nap. Um, yeah, not as hot today as it was yesterday. So I'm super thankful for that and got a beautiful view of Lake Tahoe. So all is good. Day three of heat. And let me tell you, this really sucks. This really sucks right now. Cause I thought I was like four miles to the aid station based on my calculation. Someone else just told me that we're like eight miles away. Oh my God. All these rocks are really cool looking. But when your feet are full of blisters, this stuff, is not your best friend. This section's been very long and dry. I just filtered some creek water. Gosh, like a godsend. Okay, we are at one more aid station before Andrea turns around, and it's right here at the Truckee River in Tahoe City. So we're just uh, anxiously awaiting for her to cross this bridge over here. And then the aid station is over there. And the only thing that really sucks about Tahoe City is that uh, AT&T doesn't work here. Um, so I cannot see Andrea on the tracker. I mean, anything internet related doesn't work here. And I spoke to a couple of other runners and crew experiencing the same thing. I mean, it, I nearly had a meltdown trying to find her, but it's good to know that it's not just me that's having the problem. I thought there was something wrong with my phone. So I think she might actually have a couple more hours before she comes in. I thought, I thought she was only like an hour out. So I'm gonna go back to the car. I don't know if I can sleep, but I'm definitely gonna lay down because I've only had two hours of sleep in, I don't think it's been 48 hours. <sighs> yeah, it's time to relax. Like him. <laughs> oh, okay, dog butt, all right, whatever. So when I finally got internet service and could track her, she was, running past me and my head was down on my phone. Um, but she, uh, a little demoralized, some tears. And the one thing I've been proud of to get to her is this McDonald's tropical smoothie, which I bought yesterday and kept it cold 
so that she could still enjoy it. <laughs> oh, oh, got it. So we don't know. Oh. You seem friendly so far. Uh, back there. Yeah. Here, I need to move this up. Is that hitting the spot? It's heavenly. Okay. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> it's a tropical smoothie from McDonald's. Yeah. You, I can put some in a cup for you. You've already done so. <laughs> <laughs> We are both really tired. Um, obviously, I'm not as tired as she is, but I think that we're both a little emotional. <laughs> things are, obviously, she's got more reason to be emotional, but there are things that were like irritating me, and you know, I want to, I want to do the best I can for her. So, um, not being able to track her because of the lack of service was really, really impacting my ability to rest because I didn't know how quickly she was getting here, how slowly she was getting here. Anyway, I'm going back to the car. We're gonna meet up in an hour and uh, figure out stuff from there. So do you have another blister on this foot too? I don't know. Back on the heel, yeah. But it may not, not as big as the other one. I could feel them. Which I've never blistered there before, so. Yeah. <laughs> but in general, your feet actually look really good. Yeah. Where you're at. Find something to eat with a dog friendly place? Yeah. Because I plan on sleeping at. Um, well, you'll have a lot of time when I leave here after. That's the, what I was planning on going yeah, up to Bro time. Brockway. Yeah. And then getting in touch with McKenna for pacing. You have the pacer bib. I do. Okay. I put them in my uh, in like that sectional with the medical stuff. That's right. Okay. I thought you did, but all of a sudden I was like, oh, I think she has it. Yeah. Okay. We haven't gotten a picture together, have we? No. no. Okay. <laughs> okay, everybody. She's headed out to the Ward Creek turnaround. Um, yes, she's going a little bit slow, but she's going, and that's good. This section is eight miles, and when she comes back from that section, sh it's the home stretch. Well, I mean, she's headed towards the finish line. There's no more going back and forth. Aho 200, I'm in the final out and back section, and I'm turning around and going home. In case you were wondering about this white jacket, it is a bug repellent jacket. I've been getting eaten alive by mosquitoes, like, so bad. So, I put this on because we're in a meadowy section, and at the time of night when mosquitoes are out, so I'm hoping it helps. Not a wooden bridge, but I like it. So I just got a call from Andrea and uh, she's a mile and a quarter away and she and another runner just ran into a mama bear and two cubs and apparently talking to the uh, head of the aid station that family of bears has been there all day so I guess it's not news to them I'm sure it was news to Andrea <laughs> Okay, let me get a hot dog. Hot dog, hot dog. Oh, yes, please. With a little bit of mustard. Uh, bun? Nicole keeps asking me if I've seen any wildlife. She claims it's only like maybe once or twice every other aid station. I feel like it's every aid station seen any wildlife, seen any wildlife, and I haven't. But as I was like running down, I was kind of chuckling because I was in this big open field, you know, and it's like maybe I'll see a Mustang or a Liger, you know, running across this field or whatever. So I'm going to tell Nicole when I get down that I've been lying to her that I have actually seen some wildlife because the first night I saw one of those big toads that we're not allowed to touch. Oh, that's cool. So I saw that. Okay. That's a good omen. Okay. And then I've seen a ton of chipmunks. So well, yeah. That. And then I was going to tell you that I've seen so many mosquitoes. Wildlife. Yeah, I guess so. So then I'm just, I'm shuffling down, doing my merry thing. 
and all of a sudden I hear some rustling around and I look up and two cubs climb up a tree. And I'm like, oh, oh yeah, where's so mom? I look and, there, and there she is. So me to him. Oh, wow. That's, that's how close the mama bear was. Wow. And she was looking at me because it was me, her, and then the baby cubs up the tree right behind her. Was there another runner next to you? No, nobody was near me. I was by myself. Okay. So I start screaming, go but, bear, go bear. Yeah, that's and good. And backing away slowly. Yeah. As I'm backing away slowly, I trip over a log. Oh, shit. <laughs> and then, you know, and then I keep backing away and I'm just screaming, bear, bear, go bear, go bear. And then these two guys that were headed out, they ran back up to me, which was very cool. And then, you know, they're, his pacer's like, oh, I'll go down with you. And, and I'm like, no, just go. I'll call Nicole down at the aid station and see if there's like... They're like, oh, yeah, they've been around the whole time. They, they, didn't, they didn't bother to tell you that. Was <laughs> yeah. it rain? What? Rain. What did you say? No rain. I saw a bear. No, bear. We're talking about bears. Uh, and baby cubs. Oh, just up there? Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. I didn't see him, but I heard about it. It was me. I was there. It was me. Okay. <laughs> as long as you're here. I made it. Yeah. Okay. I don't want to pass right away. Yeah, I get it. I wanted to make sure that they went wherever they were going to go. The little bear fa factory or bear fairies, wherever they, I don't know. I didn't want to see me. Bear village. Yeah. Bear village. So, update, Andrea is heading back to the finish line. Yeah, I'm officially headed home now. So that's exciting. <laughs> you. Uh, and you too. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> oh, you're doing great. Thank you so you're much. welcome. Yeah, you're doing so good. Thank you. Do you I just, I just want to finish. I want the big F, you know? Yes. Well, you're going to get it. Like, you've got so much time. You've got time yeah. now. You can go take a whole night's sleep when no. you get to. <laughs> just get out of here. Finish this car, right? No. Just shut you're, your mouth. You're not shut going your mouth. Right. <laughs> no, because I have a flight to catch. Bye. Okay, wait. So I go out and I go to the right. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Go right. Go over the bridge. Go over the bridge. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you. I am getting progressively worse looking as the days meld into one long day and one long night. Uh, I'm headed over to uh, go try and catch some sleep before I catch up with Andrea at the next. Um, aid station which is Brockway and I will be collecting her pacer uh, McKenna and uh, hopefully that goes well for her all right moving on Whew. Your pacer, Andrea. This is Breen's girlfriend, McKenna. Yeah. Super excited. M model your pacer bib, McKenna. Oh yeah, turn around. Yeah, that's really cool. And she's gonna go down the steepest part of the race, right? Yeah, it's gonna be gnarly. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Bye. See you. Bye. Thirteen miles. Do I have to check out at this one? I can't remember. I think so. Yeah. Do I check out at this one? Two o four is leaving. Thank you. Thank you again. Okay, Andrea is out of the Brockway Summit second time aid station. She has a pacer, McKenna, who happens to be her son, Brayden's girlfriend. And Brayden and McKenna are both firefighters. So this shouldn't be too hard for McKenna. She's used to braving nature when it's on fire. So this should be a cakewalk, right? <laughs> All right, there they go. And um, I will see them again in 13 miles, but it's a really steep 13 miles, so it'll probably take them a little bit. Hey there! <laughs> ha! I meet you on the trail, that's hilarious. See, I'm getting in shape, I'm going faster. Well, that's gotta be a good sign. They left before me. 
I'm carrying probably 30 pounds of stuff and I met up with them on the trail. Maybe I can do an ultra. <laughs> and now I'm headed to the Village Green aid station for the second time, the last time that I'll see her before the end of the race. And um, she has her son's girlfriend, McKenna, pacing her on this section, so she'll have somebody to hang out with her. Ken and I on power line, getting it done. Oh, yeah. You. We're just sitting here waiting at the Village Green aid station in Incline Village, waiting for Andrea and her pacer McKenna to show up. This will be the last time I see her before she crosses the finish line. And she is gonna cross that finish line. I'm, I'm just astounded at her fortitude and how far she can go on so very little sleep. All right, so McKenna and I have finished about 10 miles of this segment. Woo! And yeah, we're headed down into Incline Village for an aid station. It'll be so nice to have some cold drinks and get my shoes off for a minute. But thank you for running with me. Yeah. <laughs> it was beautiful, right? It was super beautiful. Yeah. It was steep. It was steep. All right, see you on the flip side. Cherry Coke on ice. Hopefully that'll taste good to her. This is a cherry cherry coke with ice. Oh, yes. And thank you. Okay, the cherry coke on ice in the solo cup was a hit. It's cold, isn't it? It's so cold. It's like the right cold. Yeah. Gandalf is shaking. I think he's worried. He's like, don't put me in that. Don't worry, buddy. You're not going in. Does anybody ever go 200 miles and not get a blister? I don't know. It's not really my territory. <laughs> you know? Like, yeah. Oh, I'm very new to me. So now she's sitting <laughs> in the water. <laughs> Feels good, doesn't it? Yeah. Really nice. <laughs> oh. 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 This is so good. <laughs> that was good. Take a foot, we'll start with one. Okay. You're gonna put it right on my leg. Okay, it's gonna feel nice and cool for you. <laughs> yeah, you're getting prepared for me. <laughs>
All right, so um, this is last time I'm going to see Andrea. Until? The freaking <laughs> finish line. That's right. Thank you. <laughs> can't believe it. Ah. Uh, okay, come here. Bring it in. Bring it in. <laughs> I'll give you a hug too, McKenna. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, have fun. Have fun look have at the fun. lake. I'll look at the lake, I promise. <laughs> okay, bye. <laughs> okay, awesome. They were looking at the lake. Okay. Okay. That was the final aid station I helped Andrea at. I am actually going to pick up McKenna her pacer at Spooner Summit. So I do have one more crew duty other than being there at the finish line. I'm so excited to be at the finish line, um, but I am going back to where I'm staying in South Lake Tahoe. I'm gonna empty the car. I'm going to take a much needed shower and uh, I'm probably also going to have a beer. Might even lay down for just a few minutes. And then I'm gonna go pick up McKenna at Spooner Summit. Uh, wow. I survived. <laughs> I did it. I survived. I hope I hope I did a good job for her. Just have to get out of uh, Incline Village now. So the next time we see Andrea, we'll be at the finish line and we will see her at the finish line. As the race wore on, you can see that the video updates from Andrea started to dwindle. Understandably so, as her lack of sleep was starting to take a serious toll. So, all of her energy was focused solely on moving. All right, so I am at the Spooner Summit Pacer drop off and pick up area because Spooner Summit is the aid station that, one of the aid stations that crew isn't allowed at. Um, I can't go there. So they have a little designated area off of Highway 50, um, which is called Spooner Summit. <clears throat> and uh, that's where I'm waiting, so. I just spoke with McKenna Andrea's pacer and Andrea has entered the hallucination phase of our program. <laughs> it was bound to happen. She's really not sleeping that much. I think a total of maybe four hours since Friday, really. <laughs> uh, so the good news is that on the trail, Andrea and McKenna ran into some other runners. So as McKenna drops her off, Andrea will hopefully be able to um, hang out with them when she continues on. However, that being said, she really does need to take a nap at the Spooner Summit aid station. Uh, so that's where we're at. That's the last aid station before the finish line. Uh, I'm a little nervous, I'm a little worried because uh, I know that she will push herself even when she shouldn't, when she needs to take care of herself. So I'm hoping, hoping, hoping that she will take a nap. Anyway, that is the status update. Just waiting on McKenna. Uh, they are, I believe, one point like six miles away from the aid station. And because she's, you know, hobbling, they're barely doing one and a half miles per hour, so. 
Andrea's hallucinations were raging at this point. This is the only photo of that experience. She was moving at a snail's pace as the boulders started to look like tents to her, and imaginary beings started to make her jump with every step forward. could have slept more. <laughs> and not oh. knowing yeah. what was going on. You were so awesome. sweet. You broke my you heart. So sweet. Yeah. I, just, I thought I was getting my buckle. Well, I know you were. You rallied like nobody's business. Man, you took that nap and got some food in you and you're like, and I'm out. I'm yeah. finishing. I'm going to get my buckle. What an accomplishment. I'm not doing this. <laughs> With 100% certainty, I know. Come on, let's go do it. Don't require me. I think this is more telling. <laughs> yeah. Like, it shows the emotion, right? Aren't you? Yeah, yeah. The inventor of this crazy yes. race. Like, <laughs> she yeah. did indeed so hallucinate. <laughs> but she made it. <laughs> yeah, make the like. Congratulations. Oh, Congratulations. Oh, I'm sorry. Disgusting. Yeah. yeah, whatever. Like one second, they said it was Yeah, you Ha! Ha! We have a relationship. <laughs> Thank you. Cheers. <laughs> Not me, me too. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> this is Andrea's sister in the middle. Here Hi. we go. We finished the race. Andrea's finished the race. We have. Okay. Mm. <laughs> it was a weaving. All right. Well, have a good trip back. That was fun. <laughs> <laughs>